Are you okay? Is something wrong? Or can I help you? Those were the words that I desperately wanted to hear as I stood atop the Golden Gate Bridge walkway, staring and leaning over the four foot nothing rail, peering down to the looming waters below. My name is Kevin Hines, and this is my story. I think uh, to do this story any real justice, we must go back to the very beginning. The day I was born, August 30th, 1981, in the great city of San Francisco in this beautiful state. I was born to biological parents, Marcia Silvera and Martino Perales. They had two things going for them. They had their immeasurable love for one another, and they had, in my humble opinion, two beautiful infant baby boys. One then named Giovanni, and one Jordash. They had those two things going for them, but they had a great many things going against them. Addicted to hardcore drugs and alcohol, but before that, diagnosed with manic depression. I know they wanted to keep us near them, raise us, except for the fact that on a regular basis, Martino and Marcia would leave Jordash and I in seedy crack motels to go score or do drugs. They would leave us screaming and crying, lying in our own filth for days, until one seedy motel clerk made what I call his most unseedy decision. He called the police and they took us and placed us into Child Protective Services with the idea that we would be placed into foster care. A system that in San Francisco at that time was in shambles, letting kids age out to 18 into homelessness, which still happens, letting other kids be abused by their foster parents. People often say to me, well, why does that matter? You were an infant. How did that affect you? We all know in this room that the first three to nine months of any infant's life are the most crucial for their adaption, coping skills, ability to connect. Yeah, I had none of that. Lost my brother, bounced around from home to home to home, having a new mom and dad every couple of weeks or days. I had nothing to adapt to, no one to hold on to. And so I developed, at a very young age, severe abandonment issues and a serious detachment disorder. And as I grew older, I thought to myself, well, you know what, I could, I could grow up, I'd grow up, I'd be like my dad, I'd be a banker. I could be like my mom, I could be a nurse. Heck, I can do anything I set my little heart to. Except for the fact that at 17 and a half, like a Mack truck barreling down the road at 75 miles an hour, it hit me. Boom. Extreme paranoia. Like it was out of nowhere. This mania would lead me to do things that were absolutely ridiculous. During these manic highs, these, these delusions of grandeur, such dark times, such self-loathing, such inner voice hatred. When my father was in his room working, studying, reading, writing, I was in the bathroom, peering in the mirror, loathing every fiber of my being. From 17 and a half to about 19 years of age, I'm battling this up and down, up and down. Now, I'm taking medication here and there, uh, and sometimes not at all. But somehow, somehow I was able to pretend to my family that I was okay. At 19 years of age in September, it got to be too much of a burden on my soul. At seven in the morning on the 25th, my father entered my room. He looked upon me, he said, Kevin, I, I'm very worried about you and I don't know what to do. Why don't you come to work with me today? So my father, we got in the car. We drove to City College, a, a kiddie corner on the side of City College. 
San Francisco. And as I looked at my father knowing what I was going to do, I felt not for what he would feel. I felt only pain, the common denominator in those who attempt and die by suicide with mental struggles, that epic battle with emotional and mental pain you cannot get away from. I kissed my dad on the cheek as I had done since I was about yay high. I stepped out of the car with my right foot, and even though I knew I had to die that day, a tear rolled down my right cheek off my chin, and it landed on my right shoe. With a few clicks of the button, it was done, and there was also gone my medical coverage. I didn't know that all my medical coverage would disappear with those few clicks of those buttons and that my father, if I survived, which I did, would bear the burden. I walked out to that bridge, feet heavy, heart palpitating, eyes red with tears. After 40 minutes, you guys all know what happened next. Ladies and gentlemen, I have lived 14 years past the day I should have died, and I believe it is for a positive reason. No matter how depressed I get, no matter how bad it turns, I will never attempt again. And every day of my life, until I die of natural causes, okay, every day of my life I will work in this field trying to help others. Ladies and gentlemen, remember this. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery, but today, today is a gift. That is why they call it the present. I look to you now and I say, let us always and forever cherish today and every single day. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you very much, thank you. to people on the bridge and the families and I'm uh -huh. so glad.